Well, hello, we're still a small group, but we will be recording this and it will be found then on Community Talks as well as YouTube. So welcome to the Q2 2021 roadmap. Um, Moritz, of course, here, our project manager will show you every discuss everything regarding the Q2 um, roadmap and he will take the lead from here. And I hope you enjoy it and everyone else watching later on as well. <laughs> Moritz, the floor is yours. Uh, okay, uh, welcome everyone uh, to the Q2 uh, product roadmap um, webinar. As usual, I will give a quick rundown of uh, what we have been doing in the last quarter and what our plans are for the next quarter, as well as uh, what else um, around the product is going on. Um, I would just give a highlight of a few, um, mainly over it. So uh, the bigger, bigger features that we are planning to do that we are working on the bigger epics. Um, that being said, there is obviously always a lot more going on in detail. You will be able to see this updates on uh, release notes and, um, and in communication with customer success managers, if you have any questions or in uh, more detailed updates that we're going to give throughout the quarter. Um, so, um, Jamila, can people see my presentation? Yes, they can. Yeah. Okay. Great. Because it says I'm sharing. So, um, uh, I'm going to start with a quick summary of what we did um, and take, give a quick overview over the roadmap that I presented last uh, quarter or at the beginning of the last quarter. So um, I want to point out some highlights here first, and that is basically uh, the notifications rehaul part one. So we have been working very hard to improve the notifications, and we were focusing really primarily here on the basics for now. So uh, improving the stability and quality of the emails of the email sending notifications. Um, this is mainly to make sure that um, speed and um, other um, um, that the speed and other qu quality uh, um, signs of the of the email are improved, so that we can make sure everything will be sent out, that the batching is done correctly, that it's in the background, that doesn't influence site performance, uh, that it can be tracked better on a site manager level. So we worked really on the backend part and the, the architectural part of sending out part of sending out those notifications. But we also worked on improving the email notifications itself. So adding clear call to actions to every email, uh, uh, improving the writing of the email and improving um, the, the look and feel by adding um, a teaser of the actual item that the notification is. So this is going to be the part one. I'm going to come back to it later in the notification rehaul part two that we're going to tackle this quarter. Um, so this time has been really about the email notification. We're going to move on from there towards other types of notifications within open source. Then another big, big, big part has been the gamification and everything around it. So there is a little bit more to the gamification. I'm sure you heard it before in, in one of the other uh, webinars where it's more about um, the webhook system under it and the uh, engagement automation under it, uh, which is a whole rule-based engine where people can set up rules, conditions, and actions. Um, there, from there, you 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 are able at the moment. It's um, pretty straightforward that you can say um, certain events happen, like uh, login, like uh, joining an event, like creating a note or whatever. And then it sends out, you can set as an action currently that you can set um, a notification. Um, this is going to be improved in the future. There will be so, uh, some, some triggers added, some actions added, and the conditions added. We are working hard on the concepting there. Um, but the primary focus we had for now is adding gamification to it. So this is a really, it uses the same engine, the same principle, but this, uh, we, we, we set it up as a really different system. So um, you have a gamification system where you can set up, for example, user X create, uh, like a, if a user creates uh, event, he or she will get X amount of points for it. And um, then you can tie those different rules that you create within the gamification module together to milestones. And those milestones then can again, like give additional rewards if you reach them, but it can also 
give you badges, for example, or things like that. And in the future, we again want to build on this and, for example, add maybe man extra managing rights or uh, moderation rights or something like this as a in the portfolio of gamification. So this gamification part is more or less ready. We are currently testing it, and it will be ready to roll out. It's it's going to be an extension to uh, the core open social to the open core of open social, and from there we're going to see um, well how it how it plays out in 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 the wild and iterate on it um, uh, probably the whole year throughout. There's going to be some additions, some improvements, some um, some uh, um, extensions on it. Uh, as well the gamification as the engagement automation under it. Um, I'm, we, we had a whole webinar about this, also like a talk, very interesting talk with uh, Miesko, Sijek, um, uh, uh, and Hong um, and with whom I, with uh, those two I've been working on uh, implementing also things, a blockchain project. So if you're interested in that, um, please, please feel free to check that out. Um, and um, there, uh, the third part I want to mention is the real-time chat, which is uh, our, our first big decoupled project that we're working on, which is going to add uh, more synchronicity within the communication, and it can replace the messaging that will be still in core um, as an extension, and you can add, uh, well, real-time chat. So that means a messaging is uh, more or less asynchronous, so you send something, you click on send, and it's going to be sent, and the chat is really you type it, you send it, and it act it, it refreshes automatically, um, and you can have a synchronous communication with somebody. Um, there is a first iteration. So again, we are working on this still currently, but it is ready to roll out. We are again testing it already on some projects, and it will be available, or it is available to be added to 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 platforms. Um, again, at best contact. Uh, your uh, customer success managers or whoever your contact person and I don't know socialists to 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 learn more about it. Um, I, I, I mentioned this at the beginning for the year planning. So we talked a lot about uh, synchronous communication and improving this. So actually, all of those elements are here, um, and we are currently working on them um, or like improving them at least. So we have this real-time chat that is available now. We have real-time collaboration, which is available now. Zoom and Bigble Button, we are working on with uh, with our partners from WITS. Um, so they are adding, uh, they are working uh, on a lot of other th interesting things. So adding, for example, uh, Teams into uh, um, Microsoft Teams integration currently, adding uh, researching WebEx uh, integration. So there is uh, definitely more to come from, 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 from that part. So there are very, very interesting uh, things happening in that regard with the with, uh, with partner of ours there. Um, and with another partner, we're working on CRM integration. So we have uh, Salesforce and, um, and um, CVCRM integration. Um, and we are working currently on a MS Dynamics integration. So also there is still ongoing process, but we actually achieved quite a lot in this goals already, adding synchronous, it's synchronicity and simplicity in connecting to all of those communication and, um, and, and management tools. So uh, I think this is like has been a great first step, but all four are actually still ongoing and they're quite big, quite complex, and we're still improving on each of those items. So very quick rundown here, which we've been working on. Um, it's so as I mentioned, like the 10.0 release obviously has been quite a big, uh, quite a big part of the work for the for the core team. Um, I mentioned the notification engine improvement and email performance improvements that we've been working on. We've been working on improving the automated deployments uh, in the back end uh, for the open social architecture, SaaS and extensions. We worked on, um, I mentioned also quite a bit already, the um, event-based automation system. So that has the gamification as a component, but also this rule-based based system that I quickly laid out. Um, there are a few delays, unfortunately, um, especially in the event-based automation system. We ran into a few more complexities than we estimated, so we we needed to delay, for example, the outgoing webhooks part, and that also led to us not being able to tackle the native app improvements that we're planning to do. This has been rescheduled for the next quarter. I'm going to come back to this in a second. Um, so we also worked uh, on user anonymity, so improving um, how people can um, can determine for themselves which parts of their profile are available, are visible, 
um, and how they can be found on Open Social and also improving who can access those profiles um, and manage certain segments of Open Social. So uh, this will be, uh, there is going to be more information about this in uh, the appropriate release notes um, or if you want to know more about it, contact somebody. I'm not going to go into the details of the stories here. It's a bunch of stories that we worked on with uh, some clients of ours that had the need for that and where we wanted to improve. Um, further on um, um, decoupled and front-end component, as I mentioned, we worked on the real-time chat and GraphQL authentication, which is a back-end task that uh, I'm actually going to come back to also because it's uh, like the groundwork for opening up um, sharing open social content with other platforms, which will be a part of the YouTube. Um, so that leads actually to the product line for Q2. So um, there's uh, no, actually not too many things that don't have no relation with Q1. There's a lot of continuation, deepening, and improving on the base that we did in the first quarter. Um, one of the new things, though, is um, the spam prevention part. Uh, well, it is not an exactly completely new. So we have been working already in Q1, implementing third-party tools that improve um, improve spam control. Um, we will add another two, uh, another uh, tool that's a two-step verification process for open social. So basically, um, a sort of uh, improved blocking. So people can register without verification, but then you need to have another step to verify that you are actually a real user, that you are allowed to be there. Um, it is a little bit different than the registration with approval because the account has been created already and is there in the backend. Um, but you cannot act on it. Um, this permission uh, permission change will also actually be impacted in a few things that gonna come back. So it will be part of this spam prevention part, but it will also be part of the monetization actually, which I'm gonna explain in a bit. Um, again, also for the spam prevention, I wanna mention a few other things that we've been working on. Um, so it's a web purify. For example, that um, and and clean talk. So those are the two extra tools I mentioned, which we get, which are possible to implement now for the open social SaaS versions, because and and they basically allow um, a uh, bot bot control and b um, that uh, you can determine like you can basically block certain words from being used and also block users from posting or creating content. So it's it's really about making open social more secure and giving uh, more tools to the site managers, to the owners of the website, but also to us to, um, to block, geo-block uh, certain locations, certain users, and um, yeah, even like certain lists of words that cannot be used. Um, so from there, I already mentioned with the notification rehaul that is 1.0. So there is the second part of this is coming on, which is um, mainly then focusing on the notification center. So there are two things that we want to tackle here. One is um, rebuilding the notification center in React. So this is a decoupled project, basically. Um, and it is about adding more flexibility towards the notification center. So currently, um, I don't want to get too technical, but how the notifications are created is there is a new notification set and it's created. And then if a change in, in the node or in the entity is happening, a new notification is created on top. Um, this, uh, this is tricky for aggregational purposes, for example. So if you want to say um, five people added, liked your comments, you don't want to get five new notifications, but you want to get one notification that says five people liked your comment. Um, in the current system, this is quite tricky to do and you need to work with timers and play a little bit around with it. And there's like no way to redo it really nicely and smoothly. And with the rebuild, it will be possible to basically set the notification once to create a new notification and then alter that notification instead of creating a new one and just push it back to the top. So it will be really more flexible, but it will also prevent um, as an issue that we have in currently that you see uh, duplications or uh, multiple notifications about one item. So um, it will help uh, create more relevant notifications, create a co more compact, less flooded notification inbox, and will also make the notification 
more um, seem more act, um, like actual for the user, like that they are more time bound because the newest thing that happened will be pushed again to the top and come back if a lot of it is happening on, on this side. So I think this is going to be a nice improvement. It, also tied into this, we're going to work on aggregation of the of, of all items, not only for the notification center, but also on aggregation of email notifications and the activity stream, which I think also will help with the growing amount of notifications that we are adding. Um, also, we are looking into some, some trigger improvements, so adding a few new notifications for certain actions, for example, like uh, creating a new profile update or uh, creating a new group, joining a group. Um, and also some other things for for a few new features that we are we are developing in the background. Um, for all of this, this second big block is actually some not really a feature, but more groundwork for this aggregational part, which is the flexibility of the default email notifications. Um, again, it's a, it's a little bit technical, but it is going deep into the architecture, how the notifications are created and how the templates for the, those notifications are created. And to achieve the goals and the flexibility and the granularity in how we want to set up certain notifications um, and how we want to aggregate notifications based on different use cases, we need to restructure a little bit the architecture in the background backend and allow to target one type of notification in different cases. So. It is actually connected to one of the features I'm going to mention later, um, how, where I can explain a little bit more why this is relevant. So we want to build uh, the possibility to add one single item to multiple groups, which means you also need different ways to present this notification. So if you are in one group, the notification will behave as it is currently. So you add the group to five uh, content to five different groups. And a person will get who is in one group will just get one notification. But if you're now in all of those five groups, you will get five times the notification that something has been added to the group. This is obviously flooding the, your mailbox, your notification center, the activity stream. It's not very nice. So you need a certain aggregation for this. And there are now diff, a lot of different cases how people can be distributed over those groups. And this is currently not covered in the architecture. Um, and there we're going to improve. And this will allow us more granular, as I said, more granularity in the notification, how to set them and how to make them aggregate and accumulate on the streams. Um, and it will also give in the midterm, not uh, unfortunately not in this quarter, but in a continuation we're going to build on, also way more flexibility that the site manager can set themselves, how they want to have distributed uh, notifications distributed in the community and um, shape a notification structure that really fits the need of the communities. Because if your community focuses, for example, on discussions, obviously notifications around discussions is way more important. If your community is focusing around real-time events, you probably want to highlight a lot more what is happening in these events. And this is really what we want to work towards too, to have a more flexible system that you can set as a site manager when and which frequency and with which like intensity certain notifications are delivered to the user. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, this is coming back here, and I think it will also come back actually in, in, in uh, quarter three, where we then, like, as I said, like all of those midterm plans that I laid out now for more flexibility, we're going to continue on those and set and develop actual features around it, for example. Um, yeah, the more the flexibility in, in, in setting notifications, but also, for example, improving the activity stream, which is then the third big component that we didn't tackle. So quarter one was email notification, quarter two is the notification center and architectural flexibility, and third quarter will be then flexibility for site managers and the activity stream. Okay, um, yeah, performance. Uh, but I mentioned this in the last time that we want to add every quarter one um, one performance component where we want to focus on. It's going to be this time um, implementing entity access instead of node grants. Um, I, I'm not. I, I don't want to go into the details there. Again, it's a it's a little bit technical, but it's how you um, how you access uh, certain the, well the entities there and how that influences page load times and um, 
we just got, uh, it's it's one of those things where we where we are sure that we can shave off a few percent percents of loading times of each page load so it's just going to have like a general impact on how how fast uh, pages are going to load um yeah I, I i mostly talked about this the new notification already um, I had an extra slide for this, but I, I mentioned it already now in the last one. Um, as I said, those are the, basically the three points we want to work on in the midterm for the quarter one, two, and three. So better targeting of which users get the notifications, have more granularity, as I mentioned, in how you can set it and have more flexibility for the site managers, but also for the individual users. Um, so uh, then we're going to come to the extensions. This was all uh, the core product improvements. We're going to come to the extensions where uh, we're going to focus on three main extensions that we're going to work on. And that is the organizational profiles, the app, and the monetization. Um, organizational profiles is mainly about improving the organization tags that we currently already have. And they're, it, it is very shortly mentioned here only, but it actually entails quite a lot of work that uh, will improve this in, um, in a few aspects. So mainly there are three components to it that we're going to work on, and that is uh, organizational representation, the approval system, and um, approval system for the individual users and approval system for the organizations. So first of all to have organizations on the platform currently only a site manager can add a prof organization uh, profile and then apply it to users this is the first two things that we're going to tackle so people can apply uh, for an organization so they can say i belong to this organization and people who have administrative rights over this organization will be able to accept or deny this uh, th th this application the second part probably actually like the first part will be the approval of the organization itself so if an organization doesn't exist somebody can say okay i i i want to have this organization on a platform that can be approved by a higher role and then also um administration rights to this organization can be given out and the third component i mentioned is the visualization uh, or the representation of the organization so you need a space on the platform where you can put this organization and showcase uh, the members of this organization, but also the related topics related events a short description and so forth so this is like really it's probably going to be a dashboard or a group like we're still a little bit in the concepting phase um, and uh, but this is definitely something we're gonna uh, improve on and that we're gonna work on and I think it's going to add a lot of value for, for a lot of uh, organizations and clients that we have because it really allows people to take uh, their own agency and have a little bit more space for this organizational component that we really don't have at the moment in this way. So obviously you can work around it with a group and we have the profile tag, but uh, this will really add a complete different level to it. Then the second big thing is, I, I mentioned it already in Q1, we're going to work on the app and how we're going to structure the app. Um, there's going to be a push, push mess messaging added to the app, and we're also going to rework how the app's going to be set up. There's going to be an alternative to having the quite costly version of um, adding a complete own app with a with complete own branding and, and uh, own representation in the app stores and so forth, which needs to set up this app from scratch, uh, set up a development account, go through the whole approval process, um, have a, a separate update process and maintenance process, which is obviously quite costly. We're going to try to reduce this by adding alternatively for those organizations who do not want to have this. Um, uh, more like Slack-like approach where you have the open social app and then you can select your instance, you can come back to it. This obviously reduces a little bit the branding because you don't have like your own app, but you have an open social app and that's also shown like this in the, in the app store, but um, you can still connect to your own organization and afterwards on the site in the app itself, the branding will be then obviously the, the specific organization. Um, this has a lot of advantages from a maintenance perspective and from a cost perspective uh, with a trade off of a little bit of the user flow and branding component. Um, the third uh, part we're going to focus on, which we already started with researching, is monetization. And the first part of this is connecting a social web payment provider. 
So there are a few likely candidates. Um, we are also looking and uh, adding a little bit of flexibility. For now, we're probably gonna only can provide one pro payment provider. Um, and from there, we're gonna see what the developments are in the next next time then we can support different ones um, that are tailored to certain needs for organizations. Um, but from this is probably going to be like technically the most challenging part. And there's also some interesting components that we need to change actually for open social. So we're going to focus, focus then as an application part first on the membership payments. I mentioned in the yearly outlook that there are also some other things we want to focus on. So this is ticketing and purchasing of single items and then a donation and fundraising component. So those are still on the roadmap, but probably for Q3 and Q4 respect, respectively. The membership payment has an interesting component to it because currently the locked in user role in open social is the base user role that every signed in user gets. And this is actually has quite a few, uh, quite a lot permissions by default. So you can create topics, you can create events and you can create groups. Um, and we've seen in the past that this can, can cause some issues, and especially now with the membership payment, you might want to make certain things only accessible for a, a higher membership uh, level. And um, so to allow this and to allow more flexibility in this case, but also in other cases, as I mentioned before, for example, for the two-step verification process, we're going to reduce the base permissions every locked in user has to almost zero. So um, the base locked in user, if enabled, has a, a sign up permission. So you can create an account and you're on the platform. You probably will not be able to see anything and you probably will not be able to do anything on it. And this as a base permission has a lot of advantages and the flexibility you can build up on later. So this makes it possible to have way more granular memberships and role levels. So we have this custom content access module where you can create your own custom roles. And this allows then to add a lot more like detailed roles that you, for example, have a view only role, or uh, you can create only posts. And then you have a role where you can create posts and groups and so forth. So I think it's a, it's a clear concept, but it will have a lot of impact for us. And I think for a lot of clients who use open social in how they can use it. Um, that being said, if you are not interested and it locked in user role works just fine for you as it is, and you just want to have an open community um, where most people can do a lot of things, this will be still provided. So there will be full backwards compat compatibility. Um, the normal locked in user role will still apply there. This is a completely an optional extension if you need more granularity in it. Um, yeah, that will be the first step. Um, and then, as I said, it has a lot of impact for this, for spam prevention, for some other things that we're working on and will uh, allow site managers and us more freedom in how we set up certain workflows. Um, then, as usual, so the uh, another component is um, sponsored features that we working together with uh, with organizations um, that are uh, helping us grow open social. Um, and again, there is more than this, but due to time constraints, I can't not go into all the details for this. Um, so I'm going to highlight some of the things that we think might be interesting for for more people. So uh, first of all, we're going to work on a simple job board. So uh, a job board is obviously quite broad, but in the core, it's a simple matchmaking system where you offer, uh, we have, where you have certain opportunities and you have uh, where you offer things or where you ask for things. And then you uh, try to make a system where people can find the right opportunities for them based on taxonomy, on a searching system, on personal preferences and so forth. So um, this is also in the consulting phase, and we're working with a, with a client of ours together to uh, work towards a specific use case for them. So there's going to be like probably a very MVP approach because it's very big to full scope it. But um, I'm I'm really interested like how we're gonna how this will actually work out. Um, so I'm gonna talk obviously more about this. Gonna present the first results there in uh, three months and see where the MVP stands. Uh, but really looking forward for this feature. And I think it's going to be a great addition in the long run for open session. Um, 
And the second part is the two-factor authentication. So we already worked uh, with uh, Sim as a partner together on our first concept for the for two-factor authentication. We are planning to improve this further, um, have mobile two-factor authentication and also a fallback. Uh, so basically, as you know it from other platforms that you have, uh, that you need a second device, whatever this may be, or a second method to verify that you are the person you're saying. Um, again, also, I wanted to mention it because I think it fits nicely into the whole concept of two-step verification, improved spam protection, improved um, uh, yeah, security in general that, we're, that we have been working on in Q1 and are continuing, obviously, to work on in, in this quarter. Second part, uh, third part here in this uh, sponsored list is the resource library update. So we've been working on improving the resource library. Um, as an extension, um, adding more filter opportunities, improving the layout styles that we've been working on with the United Nations in the last half year, and uh, bringing this back to the general extension so everybody who's using it or will use it in the future will profit from, from those improvements and iterations we've done on it. Um, I think it looks really great, improved usability, it applies now the content text by default, so um, um, it's out of the box quite a bit more useful than it had used to be. Um, so I think really nice additions to the feature. And the last one I already mentioned quickly before in the context of um, more granular notifications, which is uh, adding more content as a content manager to multiple groups. Again, here it's going to be a little bit of an MVP approach because the feature is quite a lot bigger than it might look in the first, first at the first glance. So this is basically about adding one piece of content, may it be topics, a discussion, um, an idea for challenges or, a, or an event to multiple groups. And in like the, the, the basic use case of somebody adding it to multiple groups is quite simple and straightforward. This is what we're gonna do here. So only as a content manager per, per permission. So the use case is basically you see as a content manager, oh, this might be interesting for this group too. And you really want to have a place there. You're not just want to cross the link and have people streaming into this group, or maybe this is a closed group and you do not want to have people in that group or they can even not join, or you want to make it added to a public group. So you want to make it accessible there too with different permissions. And this is the use case we are catering on for now. But you can already see from how I explained it that there are certain limitations if it comes to permission, accessibility, visibility of the content, um, to ownership of the items. So who can edit it, who can access it. Um, so there are quite a lot of tricky edge cases in there, which we still frankly need to figure out how to deal with. So we're now doing this very simple use case where a content manager can decide this and just can decide for her or for himself, is it a problem if I make this public? But if you make it accessible to all logged in users, this feature then, it, it, it needs way more safeguards. It needs a lot more um, explanation around it, which we're still going to have to work on. Um, but yeah, I think also in this MVP state, it's going to be very interesting and add a lot of value and a lot of um, simplicity for community managers to manage their community. Um, and then I hope we, we, we're going to add later this year the full use case to this feature. So last component I want to talk about is the decoupled part. Um, I already mentioned that we are ready to roll out the chat and we're currently already testing it. That being said, we're still working on it quite a bit. So um, we have almost a feature parity to the messaging and a little bit more, um, but there is still a lot to do in terms of improving the UI, um, especially because we want to add some, some extra features that people are just like currently used to by using chats. So um, using emojis um, and uh, things like that, but also making sure that it's really accessible, um, that it works for all device types perfectly, that the messaging works perfectly and so forth. So there are still some improvements for the UI plant in May. And then in June, we want to add group and event um, channels, basically. So this will add more flexibility or more ease of use within a group or event context where you can then uh, create a channel for the whole group or for the whole event, people are added and the moderation and uh, ownership rights are automatically applied based on the group and event context. So uh, I think this adds a lot of value to 
let's say an event where you want to talk about how to where to meet or a local group where you want to discuss the latest outcomes of a, of a meeting or so forth so um this this will be this is basically the plan and for the like the last milestone in june before the for, before the um chat feature is is completed then um another feature we're going to work on in the decoupled and front end team is the notification center i already mentioned this quickly um, so there is uh, quite some things that we are working on for notifications, um, and it, well, it is also going to be part of the decoupled pro process, uh, same as for the app messaging. Um, so both of this will be added within the notification center improvements to 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 the product. Um, Again, also here, call back to a reference I made before, uh, which is the cross-posting. So I mentioned that we are working on the authentication of have been working on the uh, GraphQL authentication in the quarter in quarter one, which was the foundational work for this part, which is decoupling content. So um, we it's the scope is not full content, all content at the moment, but it's going to be like topic notes, uh, discussions, and maybe events. So we're going to add this as a, um, as API points for, for our GraphQL API. So what's, what does that mean in the end? That basically those items will be available for us internally to use decoupled already. But primarily for now, it will be actually mean that you can cross post open social content on platforms that are not open social or on other open social platforms. So that, uh, for example, if you have a Drupal website and you want a reference to it or uh, any other website for what it's worth, you can now then like use those endpoints to show the teaser of the open social uh, of an open social event of an open social discussion or even like reference to the detail page. That's the big advantage of the GraphQL and of decoupled how we're gonna build it that you can, as a developer or as an owner of a non-open social site, you can pick any subcomponent of a certain entity. So you can only reference to the title, you can reference to the whole teaser, you can reference to the comment section of open social, only the detail page, all of the detail page, only the author. So you can really very detailed pick which element you want to show on your own website or which you want to show on your own open social installation. So let's say you there's an organization that uses two open social installations for different showcases, but there is a discussion that has an overlap. In theory, it is possible now to integrate one with the other. That doesn't work yet out of the box. It will in the future, but um, this is definitely the first step in that direction that you can then have, for example, like you have currently in the dashboard, the highlight section, that you have a highlight section that references not to platform internal resources, but to also resources from other open social installations. Um, so I think this is a very interesting step. It really shows the possibilities of the decoupled process and of uh, developing this, uh, this GraphQL APIs and um, deliver like a really nice first showcase to, to, to also make it a little bit more like um, um, ap ap applicable to, 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 to show where we want to go with this process. Again, quick summary, what we're doing with the chat. Um, I think I mentioned all of those points. So improving the UI, uh, improving the performance of the chat. Oh yeah, I, I actually didn't mention this, sorry. So there is, uh, it's a little bit internal, but we're gonna add uh, automated tests obviously and Im implement the whole uh, open social uh, infrastructure or add the chat to the open social infrastructure as it's gonna be a feature that's used by a lot of people a lot of the times it's very like direct there's a lot of traffic going to come over this uh, we are still planning to add a lot of features so we really want to make sure that this goes smooth that the that the testing is on point and that we know what impact it's going to have to it to the different platforms I mentioned the group chat for the channels that we're going to implement there Okay, uh, last point for today, um, before we come to the Q&A section is, uh, as usually gonna show a little bit initiatives, that doesn't mean that's like everything that's going on, again, just a quick um, highlight, highlight reel of two things I thought are very interesting to share. And um, one of it is the implementing of the product analytics tool. Um, so it's really about like sharing user experience and 
getting to know what people are doing. Um, if like, I, I think a lot of you already heard of this from uh, Jamila or Stefano, uh, but yeah, so why, why would you imp implement a, a, a product on this tool? And for me, there are, like, there are three really core components to it. Um, why we, we wanted to do it and why it's also, I think, beneficial for most platforms. And it, is, it helps improve the product. And we are all using open social. I, I, I think at least that's why you're here. So uh, giving us more information of how your users work with it helps us decide on which features to work. It helps us to know where people get stuck, where people have problems, but also where people really come back for. Why are they coming back for? What's relevant for them? And this is really good, important insight for us because it will help us direct our attention in this really, really big product on the parts that matter for you, for your users, and for us. This. The second point is related to this, but a little bit different. It will also give insight in the usage, but on your end. So we pool the data on our side to get a general overview, uh, but we can also split it per instance. So the customer success managers can really focus on your platform, compare it even to other platforms and see what works and what doesn't. We can look into um, retention data, into cohorts, into when do people come back? Why do they come back? We can analyze this and see what features they're using and how they are using and which people are using it. So segmentation of users and so forth. So this will get, give a lot of like tools to the customer success managers to get drive that like dive deeper into the communities and um, work with you on improving certain flows, pages, or features. And the third component is. Um, that we can help users to learn. So this is something that is still ahead. So we, we are working on how to implement it, but um, the tool we, are, we have chosen for this product analytics also allows to um, apply guides and tool tips to the product. So with the learnings we hope to get in the next month, we're gonna try partially obviously to improve the product, but also try to help them just get through those bottlenecks by implementing really targeted tooltips on those places. And this can be like possibly even done on a per platform base uh, with some, some customizations. So this is also the, especially the last part, but also the get inside part is still a little bit work in progress, but we also love to hear your feedback, um, concerns, questions, anything. So um, that's, but I think all of those three points are really, really strong points to consider implementing it and um, helping our general product development, but also improving your pro pl platform specific in the process. So um, yeah. Those are the three components that we have in the product. So this is um, analyzing where do people do go, what do they do, and um, how often they are on certain pages, but also how often do they use certain features. Um, from there, we can see the we can go into the sentiment. So basically, we can obviously only with permission of the platform owners, um, follow up theoretically with surveys, with interviews, with NPS scores, polls, and so forth. So this can be like then sent in. So based on the quantitative data we gather, we can follow up qualitatively and see if the hypothesis we gathered from the analysis of the data, if it's correct, or if there's anything to add, or also just get like a general feeling of how well is a community working. And then the third step I already mentioned is putting guide out guides and um, and tooltips. So helping people based on the get the information we gathered beforehand to get through bottlenecks and improve the overall experience and learning experience for people. Um, next to this, it's a little bit tied to, uh, because we hope obviously Pendle will play a role in this. Uh, we are working um, on um, continuing our UX research. So we already started last year uh, getting to know site managers and their task field a little bit more. We are deepening that now by um, trying to get insights into the core events. So basically features or um, events on the platform that are really relevant to the site managers and owners of the platform. 
So those are really the events that um, are the reason why people have open social and why they want to apply it. So this is obviously one component that is super relevant. The other one is the user side of it. So we want to understand why do people come back? What are sticky features? So features people uh, love using open social and coming back to, to, uh, to engage again in open social. Um, and from those two components, we really hope to learn where to focus on in the future, what to improve, but also how to improve the general flow of, use of open social. So why um, are people engaging in one platform in this way? Why are they engaging in other ways on open social? And how can we really optimize this? Uh, this user flow. I talked a little bit about it also in the in the yearly outlook that this is really one of the core um, goals for us this year for on, on our product side to eliminate dead ends and to eliminate places where people get stuck and obviously understanding where you want to end up as a user, but also where you, you as an organization want people to end up is really the first step of improving this flow and user process and user journey. So this is uh, something I'm really excited and passionate about, where we're going to be still busy for the whole quarter. And hopefully, um, I can then also present some results in the next part uh, of this webinar series in three months, where I'll uh, show a little bit what we've done and where we get out. And um, yeah, generally, I hope to <laughs> show in, in, in uh, quality of the product in the future. OK, uh, that was, as usual, I hope a lot of information for you, I hope a lot of new things. Um, I hope it was uh, a little bit understandable for everyone. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I see the chat popping up a little bit. Yeah, no questions from our side, Mark, but thanks for the presentation. Thank you so much. It's hard to gain input when we just uh, joined over social. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think also in general, obviously, uh, this, as I said, a lot of information, I'm just going to let it sit and let sink a little bit in. Um, Jamila will make sure that the recording and the presentation will be accessible. There are some cross links also hidden in there where you can follow up on more information. And um, if any question pops up in the future or if any one of the people who watched the recording have any questions, please feel free to contact me via any possible channel. Uh, maybe community talks as a message, uh, post, post a comment, start a discussion under it. Post your questions there. I'm sure if you're wondering, it might be interesting to other people too. So um, looking forward from, to hear from everybody. Uh, otherwise, I'm really happy that you guys joined. Thanks for everybody who watched it afterwards. Uh, have a great rest of the day and talk to you very soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, Maurice. Bye-bye.